In 2023, the gaming industry faced significant challenges, resulting in over 6,000 skilled professionals being laid off. This period was marked by uncertainty and the daunting task of seeking new employment opportunities. Our game is a tribute to these individuals, acknowledging the hardships they endured due to strategic missteps at the executive level. We want to remind everyone that adversity often leads to new beginnings. Every end is a chance for a fresh start, and new opportunities are always on the horizon. We are confident that each person affected will find their path forward. Hey everyone, it's Wellens. We've got something a little bit interesting today. This is a game called Welcome to the Karoshi Club. Gonna guess most of you probably haven't heard this game before. I hadn't until a note dropped into my Steam curator from the devs asking me to attend this job interview. <laughs> the note was pretty cute, so I thought, you know what? Okay, I'll bite. Especially as you saw in the beginning note, 2023 for gaming has sort of been a pretty weird year. Quality-wise, it's been fantastic. So many great games released. But on the flip side, so many devs got laid off too. Over 6,000. I believe the devs of this game are people who have been directly affected by the layoffs. And you know what? Like, very frankly speaking, as a content creator, I directly benefit off of video games. Without video games, there's nothing to stream. There's nothing to let's play. So I feel like... This is just something I want to check out, you know? I think this will be a short one video kind of thing, because it's a proof of concept, it's not a full-on game. It's a visual novel where we go on a job interview, so let's go to that interview. It's free on Steam, by the way, so feel free to check it out yourselves too. How did your job interview go today? Oh, by the way, welcome to the Karoshi Club. Karoshi is the concept of overworking yourself to death in Japanese. <laughs> if that gives you a little bit of indication of how our job interview is gonna go. <laughs> it kind of looks like a like a Japanese horror manga already. Welcome to the Karoshi Club. Okay, no saves. We gotta complete our interview. Ooh, it's been years since I've done an interview. I've been at my current job for quite a while, so I might be pretty bad at this. Help number two. Escape will reset your progress and end the game, but can help you skip the job interview. Help number three. Oh, number one is at the... what the heck? Okay. Number one is continue by pressing space. Two is escape. Three is... A piece of paper at the top of the screen or S opens the settings. Alright, cool. I'm ready. Have I been looking for a job for that long? My god. Day 1023. Payphone, what era are we in? Kenji Haishima, is that me? The frosty timbre of a woman's voice emanated from the device. Greetings, says Hitomi Takemitsu. Slight disarray invaded me, prompting a befuddled greeting in return. Hello. The unidentified voice persisted. I am Hitomi Takemitsu, representing Keneo Industry as a recruiter. A dialogue was scheduled for this time with Mr. Takeshi concerning an interview with our firm. May I confirm, is this Mr. Takeshi with whom I am conversing? <laughs> I think we can already tell this is going to be a horror game. <laughs> Is this serendipity bestowing a gift upon me? It has spanned months since my employment ceased. My search for new employment has been steeped in desperation, yet futile. I've remained barred from even reaching the interview phase. Desperation has only swelled with every refusal. 
Dare I seize this unexpected opportunity? Dare I masquerade as Mr. Takeshi to garner an interview? I'm not Mr. Takeshi. Oh, this is an era where we don't even have cell phones, so people wait for job interview calls at the payphone? My goodness. Got a little bit of a, a tattoo here with an eyeball. But what then of the real Mr. Takeshi? And of my fate, should my deceit be unveiled? Well, aren't you going to have to eventually submit documentation and then your name isn't Mr. Takeshi? Isn't that going to be a problem? My musing was interrupted by the individual on the line. Excuse me, are you present? I am unable to detect your voice. Can you confirm if this is Mr. Takeshi? A subtle undertone of annoyance permeated the woman's voice. Time was evaporating. A decision was imperative. Do it. I need a job. I'm desperate. I haven't been working for nearly three years by now. Y yes, this is Mr. Takeshi. My apologies for the delay. Acceptable. Ensure you recall our prior agreement that I would return your call post review of your curriculum vitae. Commendations are in order. The superiors found your qualifications favorable. Hence, an interview has been arranged for you. Clearly, this Mr. Takeshi possesses noteworthy skills. Fortuity graces me, bestowing such a fortunate instance in time and space. <laughs> I'm curious if this game was written in English to begin with. Oh, thank you very much. That was a sole utterance I could mutter as a reply. Kindly present yourself at our office, detailed in the following address, today. Today? 111 Tsukiji Chuoku, Tokyo. A personal discussion regarding the sales specialist's role awaits you. Farewell, Mr. Takeshi. Y yes, goodbye. Remarkably, I've accomplished it. What have you accomplished? first interview, following a lengthy barren few months. My apologies linger, Mr. Takeshi. Albeit, for unknown reasons, you did not answer your call. Fortuitous luck, it appears, holds significance in the job-seeking voyage. The only remaining hurdle is to navigate through a successful interview. But you have to... your name isn't the right one though, are they gonna give you the job later? Yeah, provided they do not expel me upon uncovering my falsehood. Oh god. Boarding the subway, my mind swirled in the vortex of the imminent interview. An oppressive fear burgeoned within. Fear of unmet expectations. Fear of error. Fear of initial perceptions. They're gonna ask about your resume and you're not gonna be able to answer anything. Because it's not your resume. <laughs> Fear of refusal. Maybe I should have said the truth. Fear of rivals. Fear of the unfamiliar. And paramountly, fear for the future. What does the future reserve for me? Merely slumbering once at my former employment has thrust me into nearly a year's endeavor of job hunting. Slumbering. Sl oh, merely slumbering once. Oh, well, too bad you got caught, I guess. Anxiety and fear have manifested as persistent shadows ever present in my journey. Did you catch the latest? That doofus isn't waving the white flag yet. My despairing contemplations of job seeking's stark reality were interrupted by the casual dialogue of two women. He's tossed his resume back in the ring. No way, he seriously thinks they'll give him a shot? What's this, his sixth swing at it? It seems they discourse about another individual similarly mired in futile job seeking. Their discussion exacerbates my own apprehensions. Here's a kicker, he smacked down every time with just a one word no. And oh, keeping a straight face each time? It's a workout. 
What do you say we throw bets on when this loser throws his hat in again? Does he get that with his track record? He's not even scrubbing floors there? With her rhetorical question, she succumbs to laughter. Her companion joins in, equally derisive in mirth. A bewildering unease envelops me. Overhearing such dialogue is far from the mental preparation I saw prior to my impending interview. <laughs> Don't listen. You have to prepare for the, the answers, for the questions. What is your greatest weakness? So on and so forth. Self-doubt accelerates my heartbeat. Panic looms menacingly close. My surroundings begin to oscillate before my eyes. Desperation for stability, something steadfast, consumes me. Even a moment's surrender would see me crumpled on the subway floor. Composure is imperative. A surge of nervousness compelled me to retrieve my resume. I scrutinized it, weighing my prospects anew. Attempting to conjure positive thoughts, my mind is infiltrated by even graver considerations than before. Is my current opportunity genuinely merited? No. <laughs> no? It's mere luck, isn't it? Is this job truly necessary for me? Should I withdraw before potentially faltering? Is further experience necessary? It's kind of like how, these days, people look for... Companies will be like, seeking 10 years of experience for an entry-level position. <laughs> Is previous rejection rooted in this? Am I deserving of employment? Am I adept for a role as a sales specialist? Questions mercilessly bore into my mind, yearning for answers. Answers I desperately require to all these inquiries. Uh... Wait, what do you mean? Truth is, I'm gonna tell myself I don't deserve it? Lie is I'll up buff myself up? I don't know. Truth, I guess? Does a resolution to that inquiry exist? In honesty, my knowledge reaches its limits. I am uncertain if I embody the right individual for the position. I harbor doubts about successfully navigating through the interview. My competencies remain under a cloud of ambiguity. The sole clarity lies in understanding that without an attempt, success eludes me. Yes, that's the spirit. Indeed, doubts may cloud my vision, but until an interview is secured, these worries... They stand as mere apparitions. My mind spins tales of anxieties, envisioning un unencountered problems. However, contending with the non-existent is a futile endeavor. Initially, I must secure an interview. And if I fail it... Only then does the problem materialize in reality. In reality, it can be navigated through negotiation. Oh, I thought the train came already. Wasn't I in the train? Oh, arriving at the place. Lost in reflections of whether my skills were sufficient, I scarcely noticed my arrival at the designated spot. There I was, dwarfed by the towering multi-tiered office structure. It cast a modern shadow over its antiquated adjacent building. The vast glass panes caught the sun's rays, shimmering warmly. Could it be that I might find my place within these walls? Joining a large corporation has long been a dream of mine. I pondered what experiences lay beyond these formidable facades. Memories of the past began to sketch out visions of my potential work days. Hey, you gotta get the job first, okay, my guy? <laughs> Within, the pulse of daily commerce thrummed unseen. Someone, surely, was lingering over a fresh pot of coffee, exchanging words on the mundane. Others might be queuing for their turn at the communal printer, a bottleneck in their efficient day. And perhaps one or two sought refuge in a bathroom cubicle, stealing moments of respite. <laughs> like you? Like how you lost your first job by sleeping? <laughs> Such trivialities once wove the fabric of my own days. Now, amidst a job hunt stretching nearly a year, a sense of duality plagued me. By the way, I, I can't tell without seeing it for sure, but this guy's name, Kenji Haishima. Haishima? Hai can be like, gray. So, this person might be very gray from not being able to find a job for this long. Had I truly lived before this interlude? 
or had I diminished into a mere specter or form of vitality? Eagerly, I anticipated stepping inside to soak in the ambience, if only for a moment. Observing the edifice and stealing myself for the forthcoming challenge, a tall girl's approach caught the corner of my eye. Oh, oh, oh. Hello. You must be Mr. Takeshi, I presume? I guess this is the representative from Keneo Industry. It's critical now to maintain the facade I've crafted. Yes, I'm Mr. Takeshi. Okay. Her gaze pierces me with a glint of skepticism. Anxiety surges within me, fearful of my ruse crumbling to dust. Mr. Takeshi. Yes? A shiver of foreboding courses through me. I trust you found our location without trouble? Relief floods in, deflating the tension. Absolutely, no issues at all. I appreciate your... She cuts off my gratitude mid-sentence. You're not really Mr. Takeshi, are you? The jig is up! This is the end of the line. You've seen through me. What now? The situation remains as it is. Your actual name? Oh, they still need a person. This means this company needs someone really badly, then. They don't care. They know, but they don't care. Oh, but I misled you! Our firm values drive an ambition. <sighs> this is a red flag. <laughs> Additionally, Mr. Takeshi has been unreachable. Hence, we're willing to consider you for the position. You are? Haishima. Kenji Haishima. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Haishima. Follow me, please. This is a red flag, I say. They're unreachable. And they value drive and ambition? That's code for they'll overwork you. To death. Karoshi. My mind reels from the turn of events. Here I stand, having deceived my way through the door, displacing Mr. Takeshi. Yet opportunity still knocks. Has my string of luck not yet frayed to its end? So be it. I'll ride this wave as far as it will carry me. Employment is the prize. And I must seize it before anyone else, Takeshi included. As I shadowed Miss Takemitsu, a sense of unease crept in. Abruptly, it dawned on me that our destination wasn't the towering structure I had envisioned. Rather, Miss Takemitsu was guiding me towards its neighbor. A dated, robust eight-story edifice. But why? Where was this dream of a sleek, contemporary workspace? Miss Takemitsu, shouldn't we be heading to the other building? No. Her response was brief and somewhat sharp. Should you succeed in the interview, this will be your place of work. Ooh, it's a red flag number two. My heart sank with disillusionment. The fantasy of a chic new office had been fleeting. And has fleeted. Nevertheless, I braced myself to reconcile with this stark reality. As we stepped into the elevator, the ascent to the upper echelons of the building began. Destination, the interview suite high above, where my future hung in the balance. This elevator music sounds like it's at a shopping mall or a department store. With each floor passed, my heartbeat quickened, a crescendo of nerves. The confined space, the sterile glow of elevator lights only fueled my growing dread. Retreat seemed more appealing with each passing moment. The sluggish climb skyward did little to calm my fraying nerves. Um, Miss Takemitsu, is it always the slow going up? The elevator is rather dated. Patience is required. Oh, I see. Thank you. Red flag number three. <laughs> Her assurance offered no solace. The ticking clock became my adversary, each tick a loud echo of the time slipping away. Mr. Hashima, on our way up, might you share a bit about your life outside of work? What do you mean my life? I don't have a life outside of work. About my personal life? Oh, well, there's not much to tell, really. I moved away from where I grew up and kind of lost touch with my parents. 
And work, well, it used to take up most of my time. Never really got around to the whole marriage and kids thing. I guess I always thought my career should come first, and the rest would sort itself out eventually. I see. Her reaction was non-committal, inscrutable. Had she hoped for a different portrait of my life? Yeah, well... I'm coming to... I I'm desperate for a job, okay? Oh, God. A fabrication involving a family, perhaps? That would be... Mm, someone who has a family, but they're looking for a job, they might be more desperate. So maybe she's looking for desperate people. Like, hmm, how desperate is this person for a job? How much can we lower their salary? <laughs> and what of leisure activities? Is she probing for a workaholic's confession? Or genuinely intrigued by my life outside the office? Hobbies, huh? Well, to be honest, I haven't had much time for hobbies. Work was pretty much it. Improving my skills and staying on top of things, you know? Is that genuinely me? No, of course not! We're all trying to put on our best selves to get the damn job! Lately, my pastimes have faded into the gray. The job hunt blurring days into a continuous loop. Have I been adrift in this limbo since the day I lost my job? Intriguing. Thank you. Miss Takemitsu's facade was a fortress, her emotions veiled. One could but speculate on her true thoughts. But our exchange had its intended effect. It scared you? Don't be scared. The dialogue outpaced the journey, and before I knew it, we arrived. This way, please. We've arrived. Alright. I stepped into the nondescript office, its familiarity a cold comfort. It was like every other room, a copy of countless others that punctuate the corporate world. Miss Takemitsu positioned herself behind the desk with an air of detachment. Please, take a seat. Oh, she's my interviewer. Is she? Uh, sure, thanks. The pivotal moment had come. Now is the pivotal moment, although she was already kind of interviewing us before. The dry spell in my career had been lengthy. This interview was a long way to break in the clouds. I couldn't afford to stumble now. The stakes were high. Yeah, and I also, like, if this is given the Japanese setting, I feel like a lot of, or what I know of Japanese office setting is that people generally don't leave their jobs ever. It's expected that you just stay in that position, stay in the company, and just keep going up like that. Whereas I guess if you look at somewhere like America, people always tell you, oh, if you want the highest pay, you should keep jumping jobs every two years or so. So the fact that they're hiring me right now might be saying something too. About me? About them? Questions loomed on the horizon of my mind. What could she ask? What should I say? Doubts about my qualifications nipped at me. Was I enough? They're desperate enough to give you an interview without knowing your qualifications. Red flag number four. A temptation to embroider my past tugged at me. But what if truth was a better gamble? Time dragged its feet, each second bloated and heavy. I played up potential scenarios, Miss Takemitsu's reaction shifting like quicksilver in my head, none quite settling right. My thoughts, usually my sanctuary, became a tempest, forecasting doom, painting me in the dreary light of future rejections. It was as if I had fast-forwarded to a future where I perpetually searched for work, a self-inflicted purgatory. But as anxiety threatened to overtake me, I pulled the brakes on the runaway train of my thoughts. Reality called me back. Miss Takemitsu was right there. The present, a stark stage waiting for my performance. Mr. Hashima, your presence today here for the sales specialist role is much appreciated. Shall we commence with the questions? Preparedness eluded me. <laughs> yeah, they just phoned you. They're like, hey, come for an interview right now. Sure, I'm ready. Excellent. My first question. Where do you envision yourself in a century's time? <laughs> what? Uh, dead? Uh... A curveball question? In a hundred years? The realm of impossibility, right? It was a given, an end to all... Death, as certain for me as it was for all. 
Perplexed, I wondered at her aim. Perhaps this was a test of creative thinking? I decided to play along. A dash of humor might just do the trick. Yeah, it's a Japanese company, man. It's not Google or Apple. <laughs> I guess I'll be the most seasoned expert around. <laughs> By quite a few decades. Oh, God. Very well. Hitomi's expression remained unreadable. Now, may I inquire why you parted ways with your last employer? Uh, it's because I slept on the job one time. And yeah, we already lied our way here. You know what? I we can't keep lying. I just ah, uh, just say the truth. Honesty is the only path, even if it's strewn with my own failings. Acknowledging where I went wrong is the first step to moving forward, isn't it? Oh, I get the feeling I chose the wrong one already. <laughs> the job was tough, no two ways about it. Oh, but you know, it's because I worked hard. I worked so hard, I fell asleep at the office. Worked till the wee hours, lots of nights. Wasn't just me though, a lot of us did. Then one time, I just conked right out there at my desk. No clue how it happened. One minute I'm working, the next, I'm being shown the door. Damn. It all went down so quickly. That's really unforgiving. The memory of being let go? It's all a blur, honestly. Okay. Your employment gap is noteworthy. Please explain its length. I was looking. I, I was looking. The truth has its own stark clarity. The veil of fiction feels too weighty to drape over my narrative. My last position was in an industry that's, well, not exactly booming. I was part of a small team making video games, a niche within a niche. I hit the job market aiming to stick with gaming, but it's been a tough sell lately. Oh god. Now speaking of Japanese companies and Japanese gaming companies, I... Pretty sure I read a report recently about how Nintendo has extremely, extremely low turnover. So yeah, that goes along with the whole Japanese companies tend to keep their people. But then, on the other side, across the ocean, we have thousands of layoffs. So I widened my search, you know? I'm up for new challenges, willing to learn. Just looking for a place where I can dedicate myself, really dive in. Oh, so this isn't a gaming company anymore. Once, I was all about the gaming life. Now, I just want to work, to be part of something. Honestly, I mean, this is just me, but like, man, looking at how depressing the industry is, I... Personally, I would never want to be a part of that. Like, sometimes you see content creators, like Let's Players and streamers, maybe they're using YouTube as a way to get into the industry, to maybe voice act, or become a host, or become a game dev, but personally for me, no, thank you. Success in this interview would lead you to the position of sales specialist. Can you tell me about any experience you have in sales? She didn't even answer my question. Like, I, I told her a thing. She didn't even say, I see. Oh, God. Uh, none. None. Now's the time to sift through my memories for anything relevant. A buddy of mine owns this quaint little shop. They deal in fresh produce and brews. There was a time I had to step in for him, just temporarily. Clearly, I'm not seasoned in sales. Hey, if it's a good company, a good company knows that it's getting the right people. People don't need the skills. A unless if they're like a really technical role, getting the right person who cares about the company, who cares about their job, who can learn, that's more important. But that's not to say I can't pick it up. I'm quite keen on embracing new experiences. It's not uncommon for firms to look for fresh slates, people they can shape to their ways. Could I be the blank canvas they're looking to paint upon? Ah, uh, how old are you? I don't know. You look like you might be middle-aged already. They might want someone younger. What sort of critical decisions were demanded of you in your previous positions? She's not answering anything! Could you detail the most strenuous challenge you've encountered professionally? Ah, uh, the truth is fine. Crafting worlds within the digital realm is a feat of Sisyphean proportions. Yes, it is! Indeed, the quandaries I've braved may appear trivial to the uninitiated bystander. 
With a hesitant resolve, I mustered the courage to speak. My tenure in the realm of game creation was fraught with trials. A tug of war ensued between the vision of our financier and the heartbeat of our creative cadre. Oh god, no, not like this! It was an arduous balancing act, attempting to serve two masters and fulfilling a duo of visions. Amidst this, the project's form morphed repeatedly, each iteration leeching our collective spirit. I feel like this is probably what happens in... Yeah, it is exactly what happens in game dev. You... Sometimes players will immediately pick up what's wrong with the game, but I feel like the devs probably know half the time already. But they couldn't do anything about it because someone else in the company said, no, you gotta do it this way. The most harrowing choice? To quell my own creative spirit and align with a financier, all the while preserving the essence of our initial dream. Such a concession was nothing short of a torment to my creative soul. Oh, but you're not going to a creative job here, you're, doing, you're going to sales! Very well. It's common for unexpected developments to disrupt our schedules. Such instances may necessitate an employee's presence beyond regular hours. Oh god, red flag number five. Your stance on overtime? Uh, I, uh, I need a job bad. I'll lie about this one. Her question is a hook, baited for a specific answer. My perspective is to always consider the organization's needs. The nature of existence is chaotic, making it difficult to adhere to, even the most basic timelines. This is amplified within a business context. I am prepared to allocate additional personal hours to ensure the company's smooth operation. Oh my god, I'm falling right into the... the trap. Honestly, work and my private time are synonymous. Okay, you're going too far, my guy! Considering the absence of any significant personal engagements, my assertion was surprisingly forthright. Yeah, but you don't have to say it like that. We've noted your perspective. There are individuals who, due to insufficient income, opt to take on multiple jobs simultaneously. Your views on juggling multiple employment roles? Nobody would be doing that if they got paid enough, okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> but from a, the organization's perspective, they probably don't want that happening. And I've lied enough. If they don't want me, they don't want me. This inquiry strikes a chord, piercing the veil of a prevalent concern. Indeed, Ms. Takemitsu is delving deep, exposing the core of modern dilemma. A modern dilemma. Balancing several projects concurrently was a taxing experience for me. I understand the rationale. Financial needs drive people to stretch their limits. Yet, I harbor concerns about the toll that dual employment exacts on an individual's time and vitality. Hey, I said I'm willing to do overtime, so I I'm willing to be at this one job 24-7, but I won't take on another job. Such strain can diminish focus and degrade life quality, ultimately impacting one's health adversely. And who better to understand this than someone in my shoes? In an ideal world, one would commit to a singular path and cultivate depth within it. Alas, time is an unyielding and finite master, with but 24 hours to dispense daily. Understood. Here is my final query. Your earnings and sales may be closely tied to your bonus acquisition. Oh my god, red flag number 5000. What lengths would you go to to ensure you receive it? All lengths. Eh. Sometimes it's a bit confusing because I don't know what the truth and the lie is. What's, what's the truth? I don't know what the truth is. Would I go to any lengths? Maybe not. The prospect of a bonus is certainly appealing. I did truth. Yet the notion of succumbing to corporate pressure is far less enticing. My commitment is to achieve the objectives within the allotted work schedule. <gasps> yeah, that's not... they don't want to hear that. <laughs> but not at the expense of my personal well-being or time. I aim to maintain a sustainable pace that supports both the company's goals and my team's needs. I've previously stretched myself too thin, and what was the yield? Now, it's essential to prioritize a more balanced approach. I believe in my ability to navigate challenges, but with deliberation. Progress, measured and steady, is the key. We've concluded our discussion. 
That completes our assessment for the sales specialist role. I have no further inquiries. May I ask about the next steps? I will now proceed to communicate the outcome. Oh wow, immediately. <laughs> I feel like in the West you would usually get a, well, do you have any questions for us? Kind of thing? Uh, no, not here. So swiftly? Indeed. The dialogue has provided sufficient insight to determine your fit for our team. I'm guessing we're not going to get hired. I had been truthful to the extent of my abilities. I always believed that honesty could carve a path through any fortress of falsehood. I hope that Ms. Takemitsu would recognize and value that. Yes, perhaps I'm not the quintessential candidate, but I am reliable and earnest. Ah! Ah! Mr. Haishima! Do you even grasp the gibberish you're spouting? The previously icy Ms. Takemitsu's tone had abruptly turned, tinged with an unsettling fervor. Hey, excuse me? What are you implying? I've been meticulously monitoring how you respond to my inquiries. And I must express my disappointment. It was a catastrophe. Tell me, how can one be so unbearably truthful? You didn't even fit once, did you? No, once? I did once. Once. And you genuinely believe that this honesty would aid you? Huh? What's going on here? I was completely baffled by the unfolding events. Miss Takemitsu seemed to grit her teeth with every word she spoke. As if each sentence she formed was a laborious task. As though it pained her physically to utter these statements. But she knows it's the truth, but she also thinks I should have lied. Miss Takemitsu, is everything alright with you? Is everything alright with me? What do you think, hmm? I was at a loss for words. Decided to try a fresh tactic this time, did you, Kenji? You know how I detest all this. What did I do to deserve this? Why must you treat me this way? <laughs> to confess my confusion would be an understatement. Something drastic had happened to Miss Takemitsu. She's the one being overworked here. Hey, if she's hiring someone to be overworked, she herself is suffering the same thing. She's going nuts. She's, she's flying off the handle. I wasn't even sure I was still dealing with Miss Takemitsu. It was as if she were possessed? By some sort of monster? As the thought crossed my mind, I noticed her transformation wasn't just behavioral. Her visage was distorting. A new set of eyes began to emerge from her flesh. Okay, this is a horror story after all. <laughs> she resembled a more gelatinous abomination than a human being. This, this is, is your, your doing. doing! Petrified, I witnessed the impossible become reality. Meanwhile, Miss Takemitsu, or whatever she had become, loomed closer. Thank, Thank you, you for, for coming, coming in. in! We'll, we'll be, be in touch. touch. Congratulations! You've, You've passed, passed the interview. interview. You're, You're hired. hired. Her words dripped with irony as she stretched each syllable. Did, Did you, you expect, expect a, a different, different outcome, outcome, Kenji? Surely, Surely not, not this one. one. Her laughter was deafening and manic. I was in shock by the unfolding nightmare. I needed to flee her office, yet my body refused to cooperate. The situation was sheer madness beyond comprehension. As my mind raced for an escape, I failed to notice her encroaching presence. She bore no resemblance to the woman I had met. Kenji! My name emerged from her, once a symphony of human intonation, now a guttural snarl. Paralysis gripped me. Action remained a distant concept. Could this be... the conclusion of my tale? Uh. Oh, oh, Kenji! Kenji. You, you seem, seem even, even more appetizing than, than usual. Oh god! Welcome to the Karoshi Club.
All right. Wow, they got a soundtrack. Yeah, I like the music in this thing. There weren't that many tracks, but they fit pretty well. Coming soon, digital manga. In the short manga, Welcome to the Karoshi Club, we are introduced to Kumi, Yamane, the future heroine of Karoshi Club, and Bernie, the head of sales with the department at Kaneo Industry Corporation. Oh, look at the shadow here. We all become a monster version of ourselves with all this, I guess. <laughs> All right. Hmm, that was a cute little proof of concept. I think the presentation is quite strong, and by the end there with all the monsters, it actually quite reminded me of World of Horror. Some of you might remember my first look of this on the channel a few years back. It's like Japanese horror manga style. Yeah, it's not like there were that many different scenes in this whole thing, but presentation looked really good. The characters even blinked and stuff. I liked it. That being said, the number one thing that I think I see being a... maybe one of the weaker points so far is probably the dialogue writing. Not the narrative. I don't have a problem with the whole, hey, we're doing a job interview, and then the interviewer lady turns into a monster. But the lines of dialogue right now, it feels way too much like the writer was reaching into the thesaurus for every other line. It makes things sound a lot wordier than it has to be. And that's why I wonder if the script was originally done in English. Personally, I think the greatest sign of someone having a high-level command or even like native-level command of a language is when they can convey simple concepts or even complicated concepts with simple words. A lot of the dialogue, especially the internal monologue of Kenji, sounded like it was a bit too flowery. And so even though the presentation and the, the sound and the music and all is really great, because this is a visual novel that lives and dies by its words, I feel like this is an important thing to maybe look into before moving further along. Anyway, that's just my opinion. I'm not sure how they would plan on expanding the universe of the story if they do make this into a full game. So it seems like this world, well, being in the job market is kind of like looking at monsters and demons left and right. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically how it is. <laughs> maybe they'll fully lean into the whole horror thing. All coming from the idea of having been laid off in 2023 in the gaming industry. <sighs> I hope everybody involved lands on their feet. And like I said earlier, this game is free on Steam. There's other endings, I believe, so you can definitely feel free to check it out if you're interested. With that said, this was Well Ends with Welcome to the Karoshi Club. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed playing it. And I will see you all in another place in another time. Bye!